What's up everyone? Welcome to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here. And today we're checking out this guy, which is one of the most unique and powerful, possibly one of the most expensive iPad accessories that you can find. It is of course the Kensington Studio Dock that debuted earlier this year and is finally coming up for order. So it works with both the iPad Pro, so the 11 inch and 12.9 inch, iPad Pro, but it'll also work with the latest generation iPad Air that utilizes USB-C and is the same physical size pretty much as the 11 inch iPad Pros. So this thing does a lot. It is a stand, it is a dock, it is a USB-C hub, it is a couple Qi chargers, it is a card reader, it is a headphone adapter, uh, it does a whole bunch of stuff all in one awesome device. So let's go ahead and take a look. First up, just mounting your iPad. You have this large section here at the top. This part is plastic, but it's magnetic, and it'll allow your iPad to simply dock into place with that USB-C connector there on this left-hand side. It'll go ahead and slide into place just like that. You've got your iPad Pro in. It'll rotate up and down for you, so it'll tilt up and it'll even go all the way back this way, which is handy because from this side, you can actually see on it and you can use it as an easel. It's also great if you have a couple people working together in tandem and you want to rotate it back so they can see what's on your display. So really cool that way as well. I uh, just love that it works in either orientations. So you got your iPad on there. It'll also rotate into portrait mode. So if you got to do something in portrait mode there, maybe your text editing helps to have a taller screen. That's just as easy as well. You can, of course, rotate it back whenever you want. Your iPad just comes free since it's holding on magnetically and that connector there just pull it right off. Now, if you have an Apple Watch, there is an optional Apple Watch adapter that's also going to be available. So you can take this guy and he plugs right here into the left, just like that. Then you can take your Apple Watch and put it around here, just like that and it can charge that way. And this is just another cool touch they put in. There's a little lip on here at the edge, which means if you do rotate it into portrait mode, your Apple Watch ain't going nowhere. It's still gonna charge right there at the bottom. So another little touch for Apple Watch users baked in here to the Kensington Studio dock. So we got our Apple Watch charger there at the top and at the bottom, you can see we have those two Qi charging pads. The one on the left of that heathered gray fabric, it has that inset ring. That's to know it's for smaller devices, things like your AirPods or your AirPods Pro. Simply place them on there and it will charge wirelessly. The other side that we have here, that's going to be for things like your phone. So you can drop your iPhone there. The one on the right for your iPhone, that's gonna charge at a maximum of seven and a half watts, the max an iPhone can charge wirelessly. And then the one on the left, uh, five watts, the max an AirPod or AirPods Pro can charge wirelessly. The MFI certified Apple Watch approved charging puck, that can do five watts of power as well. And your iPad, it can charge up at 37 and a half watts. That's 108% what Apple's charger does. Apple's one in the box is an 18 watt charger. So you're gonna get more than double the charging speed when your iPad Pro is connected to Studio Dock. But that is not all. When we look around back, do, 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 you can see we have several ports here to look at. So uh, on the back there is a gigabit ethernet port. Then we have three USB-A ports. And then to the right of that, we have a 4K HDMI port. And then we have where the power plugs in. We have dual Kensington lock ports. So this is an office environment. You can lock this thing down so nothing happens to it. It's perfectly safe. Uh, on the right hand side here, we have a power button here towards the top, or this, I guess, the left side, if you're looking at it from the front. Power button there. Above a super speed USB-C port, it can do up to 15 watts of power if you plugged in something else there. So you can get super speed there. And then on the right hand side, we have a UHS-2 SD 4.0 card reader. Thank goodness creative pros out there are gonna love that. Most card readers that we see on docks are not gonna support UHS-2. They're gonna be slower. And I love, love, love seeing a faster SD card reader included on here. And then below that, we have a headphone jack. So you can plug in your favorite set of wireless headphones if you're not using something like AirPods or anything like that. So you got a wired headphone jack as well. That's quite a bit of ports added to your iPad Pro to add uh, and expand its functionality. So a couple things that I don't like or give me pause about the studio dock. 
First, the charger is bulky. It's not anything nice like a USB-C charger or anything that'll give a lot of power, which you can get, you know, 100 watts of power out of USB-C or more. It's uh, something kind of like this, your standard brick charger. It's very un-Apple-like, just an off-the-shelf, light-on, uh, you know, power brick here. This is just gonna save money a little bit on Kensington's end, but this does like ruin the experience. When you got nice aluminum and magnets and everything else here, it's great. And then just kind of, for me, this is always just like a kick in the shins when they don't include like a bespoke charger to go with. But minor criticisms on my part getting spoiled by, you know, Apple's high uh, amount of detail they put into their products. Another thing to think about is the size here. So this will work with either that 11 inch or the 12.9 inch iPad Pro and the iPad Air. But what happens when Apple updates its devices? Say in a year or so, Apple goes to a different design or a different size iPad. There's no way for this whole top part to be replaced. And this whole setup is fairly expensive. And you have freaking got chargers, added chargers here, ports, a stand, rotatingness, charging. Like it's got so much stuff in here. It's expensive, like it's $400 or so. And if you were going to have to replace it just because you got a new iPad, that would suck. So I think that's something important to take into consideration when you're looking at this for some office environments or for workplaces, it's not going to matter that much. I mean, if you're getting work done on this, then you're going to pay that price and you're going to upgrade it again. I mean, Apple's charging, you know, 300 or so dollars almost for its, uh, you know, magic keyboard option for the iPad Pro. So Pro accessories can get expensive, understandably, but just something to remember, uh, you know, how where we are in this cycle, when Apple's going to change it. It sounds like, though, the current year, the 2021 iPad Pro is going to be the same design, so we're going to be leased with the same design for another year, which is absolutely good. Another thing that I was thinking about is those wireless charging pads. For your AirPods, great. For your Apple Watch, perfect. But for your iPhone, seven and a half watts is still not super fast. It's always just been a little bit slow. It's really convenient to have it here. If I had my preference, it would be a MagSafe charger. But there was no way this was gonna be done with a MagSafe charger in time to launch. There's just no other MagSafe chargers available other than Belkin that partnered with Apple on the thing. So I understand why there's not one in here. But all I'm saying is Kensington, for a second generation, please put a 15 watt MagSafe magnetic charger here rather than just the seven half watt Qi charger. That's just my preference. I know it's not possible at the moment, but definitely on a second gen version, I would love to see that. The Kensington Studio Dock is incredible. This is such a cool device. I mean, iPad accessories really haven't evolved that much. We get fancy covers, we get Bluetooth keyboards, and you get USB-C hubs that were usually designed for a Mac and then ported over to iPad with some minor modifications. This is the first device that I've seen that does so many things for iPad in one specific spot. It's really taking the Pro from iPad Pro and making it a Pro device. I mean, I just love everything that we have here in one compact, bespoke-looking device that just absolutely kills. I love this thing. I wish the price point was a little lower so it can get into more people's hands, but this is one of the few things that really embraces that pro aspect here, and I am so excited to see on the market. I am so excited to have one here in the studio, and I'm definitely gonna be relying on this more and more as I go ahead and use my iPad to get stuff done. But Apple still has a ways to go, too. Apple really has done a lot. I mean, I can now use an external or a you know Bluetooth mouse along with a Bluetooth keyboard to get even more done here. And I love that I can connect an external monitor uh, at 4K, but Apple doesn't do a lot with external monitor support. It basically just mirrors your iPad. I don't need to see this just bigger. I would love if I could actually have, you know, split screen apps or run one thing there and something else here. But this has been useful for video production because I can preview on that external monitor. So I have run stuff in iMovie and other apps like that that take advantage of that external monitor uh, in different ways. Apple just needs to do more. But fingers crossed that this year at WWDC we're gonna see some new iPad OS changes that pro uh, pro users are going to love even more. Let me know what you guys think. Reach me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you guys want to grab one of these once it's live, there'll be a link down below in the description.